Hello and welcome to another episode of my Facts and Glitches series, where I showcase more of what I've learned about GTA 5 in the over 8,000 hours that I have been speedrunning the game, and from my awesome viewers. A new discovery has made it so we speedrunners can bring vehicles into mission replays, sometimes massively reducing how long it takes to complete them. Take Crystal Maze for example, starting normally, Trevor spawns with no vehicle which is obviously quite slow. To change this, we can first bring Trevor and another character to the place where the mission begins. Then, giving Trevor a vehicle and starting the mission replay with the other character will result in Trevor now spawning with that vehicle. Sure as shit or one dumb ignorant white- Sadly, it isn't this easy for most missions. Most despawn vehicles that are too close to the start points. This means that, while the same strategy is applied, the character in the vehicle must be a small distance away. I will use construction assassination to demonstrate this. It's me, dog. Where we at? Where it ends? With any large vehicle, it is possible to get yourself permanently stuck ragdolling and unable to escape. Placing the vehicle in this waterway and getting out results in the water continually buffeting you into your vehicle and door. Your character is now stuck ragdolling, which prevents you from performing any action outside of pausing the game. There is no way to escape this scenario. You can't even change character, thus you must reload. On the mission Eye in the Sky, Franklin and Trevor meet up before going to look for the Z-Type for Devon Weston. Oddly, there is a small error in this mission. When you take control of Franklin to confront the owner, if you pause the game, it will show Trevor's name instead of Franklin's next to his picture. Think anyone's gonna take Suspect down. Fine work, ground unit. It is possible to rob a hairdresser's without the owner getting mad at you. Many objects cease functioning when you stop looking at them. Take this fountain for example. At this location at the docks, there is a very strange portable toilet. When your vehicle is on its side or upside down, you will be unable to complete phone calls. While the calls will initiate, no one will speak on the other side until you write your vehicle, despite the phone call being connected the entire time. Can I get a cab out to me? Not a problem. A driver's on the way. All right, thanks. It is possible to use buffered ledge grabs, the mechanics of which I explained in episode 35, to go through some thin walls. Perform a ledge grab against the hood of a car you can slide over, making sure the car is not against the wall, then put the car against the wall and activate the ledge grab while moving. When speedrunning, this can be used when breaking into Michael's house on complications to slide through his gates.
it is hypothetically possible to set up a buffer ledge grab to go inside any interior with a bit of trial and error. For example, here I will go inside Floyd's house at the very beginning of the game. It is ultimately just a matter of travelling the correct distance away and at the right angle to end up in the location that you want to be. Some places, like the Pacific Standard Bank, have invisible walls specifically for vehicles. Surprisingly, Trevor's house is another example. Oh! <laughs> Ambient sounds in this game often have no connection to what is actually happening around you. For example, at this skate park when you are a distance away, you can hear skater sounds regardless of whether or not there are actually skaters there, and this sound stops playing when you get close enough. At this location on the map, there is a huge pile of tires. It is suspected this is a reference to when the US state of Florida placed tires in the ocean to try to create an artificial reef, but failed in the attempts. On the side of Michael's house, there is an outline of a doorway that likely existed as part of an earlier design for his house. The best way to reveal it is to use explosives. I'm out. At rare times, it is possible to find Jimmy standing near the area of this fake door, suggesting that maybe he was originally intended to be coming out of it. If you Trevor or Franklin are driving when I'm on a bike, I'm screwed! If you quickly change from a throwable that uses a pin to Molotovs, your character will continue to pull pins when throwing them. During prologue, if you don't threaten the hostages to get them back into the closet, Brad will do it for you. Get these assholes in the closet! I said the closet! Get them in there! Come on! What is the problem? Why are they still out here? You were meant to lock them down! In the back! What's Come on! What are you doing? Hey. He's gonna kill us in here! Leave us alone! We didn't do shit to you! On the mission case in the jewel store, the store attendees have very selective hearing. They are spooked by bullets, but not explosives. During marriage counselling, Michael and Franklin pull down Martin Madrazo's home, and of course its wreckage can be found after the mission. If you however come back after the mission fame or shame, the house will show evidence of construction, which makes sense given Martin was paid from the jewel store heist. If you then come back after blitz play, the house will be fully restored. Strangely, when NPCs are dying on the ground, one of their hands will curl as if they're holding a gun before they die. Fuck off! 
There are a handful of cutscenes that are unexpectedly shorter depending upon how you enter the mission. For example, here on Chop, the scene of Franklin walking to the door can be avoided by starting the mission from the side of the house. But you know what? It's going to be a bit much. I have no idea how you cope. Of course I cope. Oh, of course I say that poor boy is live. But you know what? It's going to be a bit much. I have no idea how you cope. Of course I cope. Another example is the mission Father Son. It is possible to avoid the cutscene of Michael walking into his house by avoiding the yellow marker and walking in yourself. On the mission Mr. Phillips, where Wade, Ron, and Trevor go to meet some bikers, the bikers are surprisingly forgiving of Trevor running into their bikes. We're going up to that farm on the right? That's where they're meant to be. Ah! Gaga! Whoa! No! Michael Townley, alive and well, taking the same scores, quoting the same dumb movies. That jewel store job in Los Santos? Yeah? Well, why don't you reach out to him? Find out who pulled this job and how the fuck Michael Townley came back from the dead. We, uh, ain't got close. The guy keeps straight, you know, a longshoreman. Good union job. I don't care what the fuck he is. Find out who pulled the score. Hey, you seen Ashley Johnny's looking for? Well, you know, as a matter of fact, I just did just 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I saw her on the end of this penis here. So that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please press like. And if you have anything that you think would be interesting for this series, feel free to submit it to my Discord. I hope you're all doing well.